Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Let's do it. Guys, welcome to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. We've got a special guest, Mr. Tom Donnelly. How are you doing, sir? Hey, Linney. Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Good. This is Tom. I know Tom real well. We had a business together last year. So Tom has been working for Groupon for a long time, one of their top salesmen, but he's also a multifamily investor. We still have no idea if he's actually seen any of his properties, um, but that's uh, why he does all that remotely because he lives in beautiful San Diego. Uh, but why don't you start us where you want to, uh, Tom? I mean, you can start at M1. You can start before that, wherever you want to go, bud. Yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, to your point, I actually haven't seen any of my properties. I own seven of them, 21 doors total, and haven't seen any of them from the outside or inside, which a lot of investors think is crazy, especially for people that are getting started. But honestly, after you get past the first property, those fears are gone. You're just rinsing and repeating. So so yeah, I mean, just backtracking from there, I mean, wow, we met in M1 about two years ago uh we probably knew each other for less than two months before we jumped into the short-term rental business and started creating that for a while and that that was a wild ride as we know um <laughs> a lot of excitement there a lot of uh mistakes hyper growth and honestly like we talked about this before, like I wouldn't trade any of it because it was such a learning experience in terms of like entrepreneurship and business partners and everything in between. So, um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stop there and yeah. I don't know, you know, where you want. Yeah. Me to I it. mean, you know, I didn't know how much you wanted to get into that whole rodeo. We can sure dive into that for sure. <laughs> but more importantly, I'd like to spend a couple minutes because I, you know, obviously it's not something they teach in school, but, but I do find you to be one of the top like caliber salesmen I've ever seen, uh, you know, just in, in just how you handle clients and how you handle people. And I guess for a lot of people, especially people that are uncomfortable with it, you know, they don't have to be great at it, but they definitely have to have some skills. So what would you say um, is kind of your philosophy on sales and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Um, I mean, the, the couple of things I always broke it down to was one, just commitment. I mean, like you said, I've been working at Groupon for nine and a half years, um, which is a long time to stick with one company. Um, I've been in sales there the entire time. And I mean, it's, it's given me a good life and it's given me opportunity to do other things like start the business, invest in real estate. So I'd still, I can still fulfill like that entrepreneur um, need of my brain that needs to be fulfilled. So, you know, in terms of like sales itself, um, and dealing with clients, I mean, you have to just learn how to detach your emotions from it for early on, because if you're an emotional salesperson and you're taking on all these no's and all of these rejections coming at you, you start taking it on personally and then you start questioning, well, am I really meant to do this? And yada, yada, Donna, kind of, kind of uh, snowball effects from there. So early on, I made a commitment. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, um, I'm going to continue to learn in terms of like sales skills, different tips, and just listening to other reps that were in the company before me and just picking up, uh, you know, little pros and, and like tips for it for things to do while I'm on calls. Um, and I'm going to integrate that into mine and just see what works. And honestly, like probably went through a hundred different scripts, take little bits and pieces from here and there. And as you do it, the more comfortable you get with it, the more natural it becomes. Um, you know, and I turned it into a career. When I first started uh, working in sales, it wasn't necessarily a career that I wanted to get into, but I quickly realized, okay, like, my uh, performance will determine how much income I can make, um, which will give me the lifestyle that I can 
essentially want. So if I could find a company that's going to pay me well for the work that I do, while also allowing me to take the time off that I want and go travel and recharge and all that, because all that's very important to me, um, then I'll commit to it and I'll put in the work needed to um, essentially become you know, a really good sales rep, do my job well. And I think that people that have a personality that me and you have, I think we don't want to be capped. I think that's a big thing in our life is that I don't ever want to be held back from like, I don't have a, I don't have a ceiling. It doesn't exist in my world. There's always more. And I think that if you know that about yourself, you know, you can go out and make a damn good living and, and dump money into real estate. Um, by, by, you know, really, I mean, I, I know people that, that in Arizona, I know people that makes, you know, north of 700 K working for Quicken loans, you know, I mean, they're just salespeople, you know? So, so you have to really find your niche, but I tell you what, and I tell this story, I probably told this story about 50 times and you maybe have done it to me too. Uh, so, but you told me a story that I've told a million people and you said, if a client is bothering me and they're texting me too much and they're emailing me too much, you'll wait 24 hours to respond to them because you're dictating the way that the relationship is going to be handled. And I thought that was such a gym, you know? Yeah. Uh, good point. So it, essentially you're training them and how you do business with them. I'm still really professional. And if there is, if there's a fire that needs to be put out with that day, but 90%, 95% of the time, that's not the case. So, um, uh, if call after call, you I'm going to let them get that all out of their system for a couple hours. And then I'll take all the important points from that and get back to them, you know, within the next day. And by that time, a lot of times they've already calmed down. So that way you're not jumping on a call with them and it's not going to be this emotional conversation where, um, you know, maybe they're upset about something and they just needed some time to think about it and let them calm down. So quickly realized that a lot of times by not taking uh, or responding to those abrupt like phone calls or multiple emails gives them time to calm down, realize that maybe they're overreacting. And then the conversation later on, either that day or the next day could be uh, more level headed, if anything. I think that there's a bigger, I think there's a bigger meaning behind all that. And uh, there's a, that's you choosing abundance over scarcity in sales. And you're telling the universe that my time matters. And you're telling yourself that there's many more deals and, and you're allowing the universe to open up more avenues to give you what you need. And I think that that's a hard thing for a lot of people. I know it was for me when I got started is every deal, like my spleen was going to come out of the side because you know <laughs> something didn't happen or we didn't close an Airbnb deal. And it's not like you can care. Like, I mean, obviously there's nobody that cares more than I do. Like I'm super passionate, but, but you're also telling the universe that you're scared. Like this is going to fall apart at any moment. And by, by dictating the terms, you're kind of creating the space that you need to operate in, in a comfortable spot. Yeah. You nailed it. So a lot of people will take that. uh, People that have worked with me as not caring, but it's complete opposite. Like I 100% care sometimes too much, but I've I've had enough experience to know that there's overcare and there's care. And you know, if you're overcaring, you're essentially worrying about something to the extent of it's out of your control. So what's the? I never really found any value or like point of doing that. Um, obviously, I have done it in my life, but I try and limit how much I overcare about something. And I'll try and rationalize it like, okay, is, you know, is this something that needs to be taken care of now? Or is this something that um, maybe could be put on the back burner for later or, uh, you know, can be thought about a little bit more before it gets resolved. So, yeah, that's a really good point because a lot of people will take that as, well, you don't care. Complete opposite. Like, um, I, I definitely care, but I want to... I want to navigate the situation the right way. Because when you're, when you're operating from the, we'll just call it the Austin Linney uh, mode, uh, <laughs> which we've moved on from that. But when you operate yeah. from that level of franticness, you're going to make missteps, and which is not at the end of the world, but you're, you're going to make decisions that aren't based on facts. You're making decisions based on emotion. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's the truth. I mean, I just, you know, Gino's, 
Gino Barbaro's podcast drops tomorrow. And, and I told him, I said, one of the things that I appreciate more about their company than anything is I said, they don't buy out of their buy box. There's no emotion. Like this is what yeah. we buy. And so yeah. we'll, we'll transition to real estate because I'm sure people want to hear, you know, how the hell guys who are searching for their first deal and they're in a market that is, let's say highly competitive slash super expensive. You know, my favorite quote is, buy where the money makes sense and or invest where the money makes sense, live where you want to. And, you know, obviously if you were getting your first deal in San Diego, you would need some, some, some serious capital. Right. So Mm -hmm. when, when you got the real estate bug, did you think about single families or was it always multifamilies? Like what kind of started that whole thing? Yeah, I kind of jumped into small multifamily right away. So, um, backtracking a little bit so i moved out from chicago about five years ago and for i bought a condo in chicago like 2008 2009 you would have thought i got a great deal on it but i had no fucking idea what i was doing and when i sold that before i moved out to california like 2014 i lost like 12 15 grand on it Mm -hmm. out of pocket and not including the work that i put into it so i was actually turned off by real estate for a while um then Fast forward a couple of years after that, 2016, you know, I had all this money um, sitting in a bank account, not doing anything. So I'm like, all right, start looking up. What are the wealthiest people doing? Found real estate, picked up my first book, probably learned as much as I could within the first year. Um, and then just jumped into a market. And like you said, being out here in San Diego, if I would have bought something out here, I might have one or two properties because of the price point. Um, and the returns on them aren't what I'm looking for. I'm looking for passive income right now. So that led me back. So I started doing research on the Midwestern markets. Um, first market I came across uh, was Omaha, just through a buddy of mine who uh, his company was doing a, landscape, a big landscape architect project there. So from there, it was, okay, how do I find brokers and agents within Omaha? How do I find the best ones? Um, this isn't a plug for bigger pockets, but I went on bigger pockets and I found all the agents that I could reach out to probably 30 of them. Two of them responded. Um, they were actually partners, so they were working together. One of the guy guys, uh, is heading up like the, the local, uh, Omaha real estate meeting there and it's turned into this big thing. So, you know, he was at the beginning of his journey. This was 2017. So I said, all right, he, he started wholesaling deals at that time. So I said, all right, listen, like, I'm going to make a trip out to Omaha in the next coming months. Um, just want you to drive me around the market, show me the market, uh, give me an idea of like what neighborhoods to invest in and like what properties look like and pricing and whatnot. So went out there for four days. Um, he took me around for a couple of days. I didn't see any of the properties I was going to buy. Uh, looking back, there was actually a really good deal. It was like a 14 unit building that I wish I would have purchased, but out of my comfort zone at the time for being the first deal. Um, so passed on that. And about two months after I got back to, to, to San Diego, um, he sent me my first deal, which was a duplex. And so what stopped you from flying out there and checking it out instead of just buying it? Uh, I, I didn't need to. So I knew I had a good broker. He had connected me with a good lender um, that had some property managers in the, in the market that they were already working with. So when I really thought about it, I was like, do I need to fly out somehow to see the property or can I do everything from San Diego? And when I wrote, wrote everything down and what I need to do, I'm like, I can do this all virtually. And also I wanted to train myself. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to fly out to every market every time I find a deal. So if I could do this with the first deal, get past that, uh, that fear mindset, then from there, deal two, three and beyond, it's just going to get easier and easier, which it did. So, so yeah, I was just getting past the fear of that first deal. And for anybody that's looking to do their first deal out of state or first deal in general, that's long distance. Um, you just got to find good people in the market. That's it. If you, if you build a relationship with a good agent and broker, which is not hard to do, and you don't bullshit them for what you're looking for and what you can afford, um, they'll start sending you good deals. And I'm going to, I'm going to notice the theme there. 
once again, you choose abundance over scarcity. And, and see, what I love about that is that I have a buddy. He runs a massive business. Like, he's got a story that you've never – I mean, you met him. Uh, you met Josh. He's got a crazy story. He, guys, he's actually moving to Texas from California to get away from his business to train himself not to be hands-on in this business, guys. Like, and it's like a seven, okay. it's like a $7 million company, guys. And what Tom is saying is, like, you have to train yourself the way that you operate, the way that people handle you. And once you get over that initial hurdle, then it just becomes the norm. That's all we're saying. And so, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, are you going to, like, I've got a friend who I think he's bought, I think he's bought like six duplexes uh, and like a, a home in Tennessee for an Airbnb and he's in Dubai. Like, you know, and he's, and I'm just like, and that's in the last month, bro. That's in the last month. (laughs) And I'm just like, there's guys searching for their first deal. And the thing is, is like, it really is that first one. It took me seven years. And then after that, it's like, oh, you know, it's whatever. And so now you're basically saying like, you know, this is how I operate. And, and guess what? There might be a scenario down the road where somebody screws you, but you can't control that. Right. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time, right? Like, not all the all the uh, choices I've made have been great. I've been screwed before, but you know, when it comes to like finding your first deal, too, it's like, what's the what's the risk and what's your risk tolerance for it? Like that duplex that I got is forty k, and I had to throw twenty k into it, um, you know, to get it to where it needed to be to rent it out. So I got a construction loan out of pocket. It's like fifteen thousand. A uh, funny thing is within that week I got that duplex, we also had a uh, a quad sent to us, so a fourplex. So of course. of course. So you know, I kinda had an oh shit moment because I already committed to the duplex. The quad looked like a great deal. Um, so didn't pass on that one. And you know, like it it's worked out. Closed on both of them. The quad I have with the partner, we we dealt with our nuances. I mean, you know, with property management and not getting good tenants in there and whatnot. We had a roach problem for a while. All of that, so it it sounds like a big hurdle, but once you're in it, it is such a, uh, a minuscule thing to deal with when you look at the long-term reward of owning the properties. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I keep going back to the theme. I've done like four podcasts. I keep going down to the theme. Everything to build true wealth is not sexy. None of it's sexy. This is yeah. this is business, and it's business at a gamble level. But once you identify factors that involve on assets, right, you can mitigate your risks slash protect your upside. You know, and, and that's what people don't understand. It's like, you know, I, my ex wife used to just like get so mad at me because like I'll bitch about spending twenty bucks, but I'll walk into a house that's like three hundred k and be like, we'll take it. And I'm like, and she's like, you did it like it was water. And I'm like, cause I know what the asset can do for me, you know, in Airbnb and so on and so on. So, you know, you right. have to you know, make the value sh- of it in the value of it. Right. It's a business, it's a vehicle, you know, and that's what we're talking about here. And what I think is exciting yeah. you, I don't know if you want to share it, but you know, you told me we, we just saw each other in San Diego. Um, but y'all, do you want to share what you and your girlfriend are about to do? Which I think that this, is that cool? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, about- that, that's why this entire podcast is exists <laughs> is what's about to be explained right here, guys. The real reason. Yeah. The real reason. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I assume you're talking about is hitting the road. Yep. Okay. So I'm like, wait, I didn't tell you we're getting married. lifestyle. Cause no, I don't, I don't even know when that's happening. <laughs> oh, I was like, I was like, did I don't know something? <laughs> well, well, if you saw her guys, he'd be an idiot not to. So, uh, but that's a whole other story. Thank you. But yeah, no, but construct your life. That's the name of the podcast. That's yep. why this is matters. The story. Yeah. Yeah. So we have been tossing around the idea for like a year and a half now of getting on the road, buying a motor home, travel trailer, um, and hitting the road for no set amount of time, right? Like originally we said, let's do it for a year. Uh, I've talked to a couple of people that have, have set that goal when they first got on the road and they've been on the road for four to six years. So they're like, the year goes by like that. Don't put a, a time cap on it. Just let it kind of, uh, you know, play its part. 
you're probably going to love it. But if you don't, what's the worst that could happen? Move back to San Diego, get an apartment. So, so yeah, funny that you said that because we, uh, when we got back from Tahoe this past weekend, <laughs> she's, you know, she's been a little bit on the fence about it, but because she hasn't seen the right RV parks and yeah. we drove past some like really badass ones in Tahoe as, mm-hmm. as we're driving back on Monday, we're talking about it. And she's like a hundred percent in. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little secret about women, and I'm not saying I know everything about women, but guys can paint a nice picture, and that's cool. Your words matter, but until they see it, and they're like, oh, yeah. okay, and that, like, guys, if you need to, like, like I want to go on the road, and I want this crazy RV, well, then rent one, and make sure you pick the nicest RV part. Yeah. Don't pick the shitty one, please. I see. I fucked up. <laughs> back in back in March, my dad was out here, and he was. It was like two hours east in El Centro, which there is nothing out there. So we rented an RV for the weekend. We went out there and stayed in El Centro. And it's like demographic. Everybody's like 60, 70 plus. And she's like, oh, shit, you know, is this how the road's going to be? And I'm like trying to tell her, no, no, no. Like there's much better parks out there. We're going to find them. Um, So we drove past a couple in Tahoe and I completely changed her mind. So so yeah, we were actually talking this morning. We're gonna go. There's a big RV uh, dealership out here in San Diego, and we're gonna go check them out and just walk through a bunch of them. We don't know what we're gonna get yet. Probably a fifth wheeler travel trailer, mm-hmm. but it's gotta be something efficient to be able to work in and also live out of. And I've seen some really cool like conversions of families taking out cabinets, putting in desks or like putting in makeshift, makeshift walls so multiple people can work out of it. So, so yeah, man, I am super excited for it. We're putting the the goal of being on the road by like early next year. So hopefully and we'll, uh, we'll find something good. Soon. And it, it's, it's choices like that, that it, it's like, you're just saying like, like when you make decisions like that, like everything else is, is binary because it's like Austin, like, Hey, I'm going to move to Arizona. Okay. Boom. Like, like, it's like, I don't even like think about it because I mean, at the end of the day, like, like you said earlier, like what's the worst thing that could happen. But, but so many people are crippled by fear yeah. and limiting beliefs or, or more importantly, like what it looks like to somebody else. Like who gives a shit? Like exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I've said it three times today. I'm going to keep saying it life is a pyramid each block builds your life the problem is is that nobody knows what the top of their pyramid looks like because they don't define it for love themselves it. you know yeah. and so I if you it, and your, if you and your girlfriend want to travel you know and that's what works for you you have a remote jobs who cares you're obsessed with the nature and the outdoors and national parks you know that's all that matters and guys it doesn't matter what anything looks like. If you want to go live in the suburbs and you want your kids to go to a great school and they play soccer, like tear it up, man. I don't give a shit. Like, like, but, but like some of us are ramblers, you know? (laughs) Well, and let me say this too, like between the traveling, the RV living, real estate, I mean, it's like you talk to the so-called investor that doesn't own a real estate deal well, why have, why aren't you in real estate oh it's too risky but then you talk to everybody in real estate regardless of how many mistakes they've made they're building wealth with it it's the same thing with the rv you know i talk to people and they're like well how are you going to get wi-fi uh how you know the park's going to be comfortable enough blah 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 i've taught i know two families that are on the road one of them mm-hmm. um you know it's his wife and two kids they've been on the road for i think they're going on their fifth year I love it. He's like, we ask our kids every year, what, do you want to go back to, you know, Florida? I think is where they were talking about. I think I know down. who you're. I think I know who you're talking to. I think I met him in Austin. Yeah, you probably did. Yeah, and he you know what he said to me? Greatest quote ever. Drop the mic. He said, "He said I live where everybody vacations, baby." <laughs> <laughs> and so true, man. And he's ru- uh, he's yeah. running. He's running two businesses from the RV. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's not for everybody, right? But for people like us, like I love coming home to San Diego, but when I'm coming back from vacation, I'm already thinking about my next vacation. Like, where am I going? I just, I love being out on the road. Mm-hmm. It's the creative juices flowing. Like, you know, I just feel more alive when I'm, when I'm out and like traveling and being somewhere new. So, so yeah, man. I, but, but I, on a deeper level, the reason 
to, to really break it down and shove it in a corner. The reason that people can't do these things or travel or something is because they've over leveraged their credit cards. They bought a house they can't afford. They bought a car they can't afford because they're trying to impress somebody that's not them. And all yeah. the guys that I talk to, especially the dudes in GoBundance, they have created these massive businesses that have just st stuck a stake through their, no their, th their neck because they can't leave because they've got all this overhead. And then they, yeah. tore, they tore it all down and rebuilt it. And basically they've yeah. said, this is exactly what I want. It's not going to, you know, if it gets this big, that's great. But then I can, I can control it from that moment. You know, when yeah. I look at, I look at something like, I look at somebody like Aaron Amusastegui and, you know, he's like, this is my, sh like, this is great. Like we failed and like, then we retooled it. And like, I look at what happened and we can talk about it. I look at what happened with us and it's like, if you're like, like, I, you lost money before I just found out, but you know, I lost, you know, 25 grand, you lost money too, like about yeah. the same, if not more. Yeah, about the same. And, and, and like you can sulk, I mean, and I did for a day or two, but, but what I'm saying is like, at the end of the day, like I never went to college, like business school. I never like created a business like that. And so I, what I was telling somebody earlier, uh, what it taught me is self-awareness. And the, mm -hmm. when I step back and I look at it from a granular level, I look at it as like Austin lied about the roles that suit him the best. And I wanted to self-sabotage because I was so unhappy. And yeah. so, you know, and so you look at stuff like that and you're like, okay, great. Okay. We identified, you know, there's many, there's many other factors in that whole scenario, obviously. Yeah. But well, for yeah, me, man. but for me, I took ownership of what, what was really the, the, the underlining fact instead of letting emotion get in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah, dude, and you've grown tenfold. Like, first time I've seen you since last year when we got out of partnership was, what, like three, four weeks ago? Sure. So, yeah. like, you know, I, we, I didn't know what to expect when I saw, I saw you. Like, we didn't, I think you felt the same way. Like, we don't think there's any hard feelings there, but... Yeah, you know, and then I saw you, and you just have this much uh, more like sense of like calm and like purpose. I think mm -hmm. is even a better word mm -hmm. for it. Like we we both thought we wanted to do that, and that was going to be kind of like our gateway to all of our, our dreams and whatnot. Found out that it wasn't. We learned a ton from it, and it made us pivot and shift just on you know what's next. All right, so we're, guys, we're gonna have a little therapy session here, real quick, because I'm gonna tell Tom. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Tom stuff I haven't told him. You know, I've done a lot of work around the business. Obviously, nobody wants to lose money. There's, there's, there's hurt feelings and everything like that. But Omar, who's my favorite human in the world, my coach, God love this man. Uh, he made a point, and it's a very good point. He said, when you were 80 years old, he said. You lost money from Kaizen. He said, but understand that you as Austin were in the restaurant business for 20 years. He said, they gave you two gifts that you'll never be able to take back for the rest of your life. He said, they made you, you did or they did believe in something so great that it allowed you to turn around and burn the fucking boats and, and really go with something that you thought was going to be your everything. And it wound up not being that. That's fine. But it got you out of the restaurant business. Thank God. The second thing is, is because y'all were sober too, it gave me the space to be okay with not drinking. And so what price can you put on me being sober for a year and seven months now and getting my life back? I'll spend triple the money. I love that. I love that, man. Yeah, it's invaluable. There's, mm -hmm. like, what direction would you have taken if we didn't? You know, like it was meant to be, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it was one of... And for me, looking back on it too, like it fulfilled, like I always needed to start it, start some kind of business and just see, you know, there is just that entrepreneurship inside of me. There still is, but it's, it's molded a little bit and it's a little bit different. So I won't, I'm more hesitant to jump into something out of excitement mm -hmm. rather than like thinking it through, does this really align with what mm -hmm. my why is, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to create another job for myself. Uh, if I'm going to own a business, I'm going to be working on it or it's got to be yeah. passive or semi-passive like real estate. And I think we talked about um, when you're in San Diego, like you start, I'm starting to look at laundromats. So like these mm -hmm. things that align with <clears throat> what my why is and when me and Aaron are out on the road, Jeez. I'm not going to be fucking glued to my laptop all goddamn day because there's guest messaging me or there's some, there's fires to put out. 
Dude, and I don't have... want to have to worry about that, right? I want to be able to put my phone down for four hours and not have to worry about what's going on. Dude, next level, guys. I just got off with my financial advisor. I interviewed him. I like, okay, people invest money because they think it's what, whatever, house flipping, whatever, Airbnb, whatever the hell you want. But you're not investing for the lifestyle you're trying to create. Because for me, I want to be of my own bank. That's what I'm after. So like I'm lending money out right now to investors. Like, because guess what? When I'm in Croatia, like I'm not going to be getting a phone call. The fucking plumber didn't show up. Like I'm not going to be getting a call. They can't get the Wi-Fi. And it's, and you know what? It really sucks guys. When you spend five years of your life cleaning toilets, learning the business and you get to the end of the road and you're going, I don't like this. And it yep. takes, guess what guys? It takes somebody to walk away from a 13 year marriage and say, this is not good enough. And, and you guess what? That's fucking scary and it sucks. But through the other side of that, everybody's happy and it is what it is. So you might head down a path and you might think it's the be all end all, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. It probably isn't. And so as long as you're living in your core values and you're living in who you are as a person, the rest of the shit doesn't matter. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. You said that. Wow. And not to uh, completely get off track here too, but for like people that are listening that are, are trying to find a mentor or the mentor, I mean, I think you know the story that I had with mine last year that didn't work out and I paid yes. a shit ton of money. Yes. For that. Tell them, baby. You don't have to you don't have you don't you don't have to give names, but no, so guys. Yeah, so names, guys but... so guys, let's let's for the for the audience playing at home. Twelve grand loss, twenty seven grand loss, another twenty six grand loss. So we're now up to seventy five, give or take. Guys, this isn't all wins, baby. No, it's not. And for some reason, like I put the blinders on sometimes. And like when I'm focused on that one thing, like it's got to happen. And that was my thing like two years ago. You know, we met an M1, like, all right, I'm going to mastermind. Now I got to find a mentor. And I think those blinders were so big that when I found that person that I thought he was going to be, uh, you know, the guy to lead me to all the investments and blah, blah, blah. Um, I put the blinders on and put my trust in him and paid a shit ton of money. And down the road, six months, come to realize what's not much value there. Now, there's a silver lining in everything. Like, that ended, um, you know, in a shit storm with me and, like, five other people that were in his mastermind because we were all kind of in the same boat. But the silver lining is I built some great relationships and met some great people outside of that that have led me to – um, different deals. So I, you know, I met Jason, um, who led me to, uh, the Tennessee market and ended up buying a cab, a, uh, Airbnb out there. So you never know where those things are going to lead, but it took me a long time to come to terms with this money's gone. It's not coming back and stop trying to think of ways that you're going to invest it because it's fucking gone so what did you learn from the situation mm -hmm. and what are you going to make sure you don't do again to avoid the same mistakes so that took me months to get to get over that because it was such a large chunk of change a lot of energy invested put my trust in somebody i you know being in this for so long I, I i thought i could read people pretty well I mean, there's a couple of people in the past couple of years that um, have proved me wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, they're completely different people than I thought they were when I actually really got to know them uh, on a personal level. So I think so yeah, I, I, I think that's one of the reasons somebody asked me the other day, like when you walk up to people, you just tell them like, hey, I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic. I said, yeah, <laughs> I just drop it like in the first five, 2.2 seconds because they know like this guy's transparent as it. fuck, you yeah, know, it's like, it. it's like, whatever, dude, you know, like, yeah. I, mean, I don't care. And right? if they're, yeah, if they're going to be like, oh shit, well then fuck them, right? You don't want to get to know them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so it's like, all right, well, I mean, it's like, I just laid it out there. What you got? And like, this guy, this guy I just talked to, he's like, damn, I'm inspired already he's like that was two minutes into the call but yeah but but here's something like if you didn't have a loss then i would be worried right and so the 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 silver lining in all this stuff 
is that every time that that happens, you're leveling up one more and you're going more and you're going more and you're going more. Yeah. And I think one of the, one of the episodes I did a while back, I think that everybody lives their life on. And I think it's a crime is absolutes. I think absolutes are fucking bullshit. I think absolutes are, are ridiculous in relationships, life, business, all the above, because then you've separated yourself from wonder. You've separated yourself from, from, from creativity. You separated yourself from, being surprised like you know yeah. because this is what it's going to be and this is the only thing it's going to be and i i guess what like at the end of the day like what you're doing now if you if you invest in laundromats for five years you might be like okay that's great now i want to do this you know and so on to the next thing yeah. on to the next thing and I, I think that that everybody thinks that this is the only thing they're going to be doing forever and this is the only place i'm going to live and yeah at the, end, at, at the end of the day if you if you live through intention and you live on you know, who you are as a person and who, what you bring to the table every day. I think that's way more than unit counts or money or anything like that. A hundred percent, man. And it, it goes back to what you said before too. It's having that abundance mindset and knowing that whatever money you lost, you're going to make it back tenfold eventually. Um, knowing that, you know, like you said, if, if somebody doesn't have any losses, you'd be worried. It's because they're not taking the risks that they need to take to, you know, get to the abundance or the wealth that they want to achieve in life, financially or energy wise, relationship wise. Like mm -hmm. we all have ex girlfriends, ex wives. We all have, or some of us have ex business partners, you know, mentors. Like I'm willing, we're, we're willing to take that risk because when you look at the reward of what can come out of it, it's worth jumping into that risk and pain, you know, whatever monetary amount is tied to it. Mm -hmm. And so this is my favorite new question on the podcast. If Tom sitting here today were to talk to Tom before he invested in 21 doors, what would he tell him? How much time did I get before I got to talk to Tom now? What's or that? Are we talking? So are we talking like I would be able to talk to myself years before I got started? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking do it. Stop <laughs> worrying about everything <laughs> and stop fucking up. Right. Like mm -hmm. I haven't had a drink in two years. I used to be a definition of a weekend warrior going out and just drinking all the time. Um, I spent way too much energy doing that in my 20s. So if I could go back to 25, 26 years old, I would have started uh, financially looking at ways to like invest and grow my wealth then rather than just making money for my job, then going out and blowing it on booze and women. So, yeah, I mean, I think that would be the best advice I give myself that and don't overanalyze everything. Right. So like, if you're going to make a decision financially and it can't um, completely take you under and you assess the risk, then just do it. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn from it regardless. If, if you lose some money from it, you're going to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think like, I don't think anybody understand the story fully. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put a bow on it for the next couple minutes. Guys, yeah. these are two guys that lost not, we didn't lose a hundred bucks together. We lost <laughs> like some real ching, uh, you know, like 26 grand a piece. And, and we had and seen, a lot of sanity. We had a lot of sanity, sanity. Sure. and we we hadn't we hadn't seen each other in in probably a year, give or take. Um, yep. And we saw each other for the first time in three weeks. It was like it was like seeing an ex wife for the first time. Um, I was super <laughs> like, nervous. Do I want to hug you? Do I yeah. want to punch you? Do I want to punch you? Do I want to whatever? <laughs> but I think the theme, and I think kind of what we talked about when we met, was like ownership. Like we're just saying, like, hey, this is all a learning lesson. We'll take all of our parts of it. And like, at the end of the day, like if I could speak for myself and you can respond, I think that also like you've probably never dealt with anybody like me before. So that was a pure learning experience, <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm so, glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but uh, what I'm saying is like, because you dealt with me and y'all were very vocal about, Hey, this doesn't work for me because you're not, you're not just going to let shit slide. That allows me to be the CEO with my employees now and they are better served for it. And so yeah. these are the, these are the steps. I mean, my guys love me like fucking will like kill somebody for me, but that all comes from Kaizen. It all comes from, 
you know, mistakes and, and getting told yeah. straight to your face. I could s- show you emails, guys, where, you know, you're getting like undressed and this is real. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, like, you know, but there's there probably is... a little harsh at times. Right. But it, it's all of us. Yeah. I mean, here's it was just the one, here's the one thing I'll say about you is you were always willing to listen mm-hmm. and learn and be like, all right, we're going to do shit better from here on out. Like, I'll take the feedback. Whereas, like, me personally, when somebody's yelling at me, like, I just put it on defense mode right away. <laughs> yeah. One of the greatest, and I've, I've shared this with everybody, one of the greatest compliments you ever gave to me is, like, you might not always be right, but you sure as fuck fix it real quick. Like, and yeah. that's what, and that's what Danny said about me. She's like, literally, I could be like Austin at nine o'clock at night. She's like, Austin, this doesn't work for me. And then I show up to breakfast the next morning and it's all changed. And she's like, I don't understand You just changed it in like 12 hours. I was like, yeah, you just, that wasn't working for you. Like, well, one of the things I always loved and hated when we worked together was like, I couldn't stay mad at you for long. Right. <laughs> like I might hate you at 9 PM tonight, but by like 6 AM tomorrow, you'd be reaching out and be like, Hey, we got a possible like 10 more units we're going to bring on. And there's like, I, you know, love, hate relationship. <laughs> no, a thousand percent. I think I have that with 90% of this population. So, you know, at the end of the, at the end of the day, nobody can fault me for my passion. Right. It just, yeah. you know, if to get at a granular level to explain to y'all guys, and this is just from, cause me and Tom are heavy into personal development and reading. This is, work that you can choose or not to choose to do on yourself. It's as simple as that. But if you don't, I don't think you'll reach the heights of where you want to go. There was a character. You'll love this. There was a character that we identified and uh, it was not the greatest guy in the world, but we named him Tasmanian devil. And he was like a fucking, he went in the room and tore everything up and he got shit done, but he never got it done the right way and left a destruction. Well, we got rid of him and we created uh I created somebody, uh, it was Clint Eastwood and he had the hat on with the cigar out of his mouth and like, he was cool as shit. And like we, I embodied those characters of who he was like, you know, confident, abundant, didn't fight for a deal. And so every time I went to a meetup, I stepped into Clint Eastwood. And what happened was, is over a two month span, I just became that person. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. I mean, that goes back to like, me saying like you've always been willing to like admit your faults and just grow from them because i i I truly noticed that from like last year when i saw you last time i saw you was august Mm -hmm. 2019 and before we saw each other a couple weeks ago and like you could just see this like you broke through something that you were dealing with before that was always kind of there that you couldn't uh fully figure out and when Mm -hmm. i saw you this past time and came back um, when you came back to San Diego, like I could tell you were just a different person than from the last time that I saw you. It was awesome to see that, dude. And I think, I think what people don't talk about enough, and it's really weird because as I get into coaching and I get deeper, um, there is, you can see it in pictures. You can feel it when you're around somebody, not enough people talk about energy, right. And how you're feeling as a person, people react to that. Right. And there is just, uh, there's a happiness on my face. There's a confidence level of, yeah. of direction. You know, I have a friend, right? He's known me forever. He, he picked me up when I got a DUI. He picked me up when I wrecked my car. I mean, this dude's known me since I was like fucking 12. He's my like older, like version of me. We were sitting on his back patio like three months ago. And he said, look, <laughs> he said, I'm not saying that I didn't know you were going to be successful. He's like, but you were all over the mother. He was all, all over the place. He goes, this guy right here, he's like, this guy is confident in who he is. He's not seeking validation. But truly what it was, was I did a ride along. I remember the day. I remember the time. I did a ride along. You'll love this, Tom. You of all people will love it. So I'm riding with Templeton in the car. We go, like, I've been with them since 5 a.m. Gym, like flips. I mean, we saw everything. This is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're driving down the street. And he looks at me and he goes, hey, man, I'm not saying that all your ideas are, they're not great or anything but he's like i don't give a fuck (laughs) he goes he goes he goes it's not my business he goes so until you until you wake up and you realize that i you don't need my approval you don't need anybody's approval he said you know it'd be awesome he said it'd be awesome if you did all these things and didn't tell anybody and then we were like oh damn look at austin yeah yeah and and so you know that was kind of the turning point for me 
Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and like one of the things too, why I think we remain friends even after like all the business bullshit that we dealt with is we both know we're willing to work on ourselves and become better people. Like if we weren't, if one of us wasn't like that, let's say if you weren't like that and you were just going to go be that person and blame it on everybody else, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. But knowing you're constantly trying to overcome, uh, you know, all the bullshit in your life and the things that you've dealt with in your past, as do I, it allows us to, there's an instinct, there's like a camaraderie with that, right? Because we want to be better people now and, you know, five years from now, completely be on a different level when it comes to everything, wealth, spirituality, relationships, all the, all the stuff that we work on. So so yeah, always knowing that that part of us is infinite always allows me to get over the things that happened in the past with anybody and continue on that relationship or friendship because, you know, we're on the same way, wavelength when it comes to that part of our life. No, and I, 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 I mean, thousand, I mean, dude, there's so many guys like <laughs> I just had him on like, dude, dude was doing like cocaine at eight years old. I mean, it's like, you know, he, he lived in a trailer with rats coming in. Like, you know, he's runs a $5 million business now. You know, it's like, like your past is what your past is. But like, if you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to like step up and guess what? It's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to yep. do little things to get to where you need to go. And I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. I think that's what you can that's the platform that can create change within relationships. For sure. I, I mean, with, with us, with all the people that we know in our network, look at everybody's past. Everybody's dealt with some, some shit or yeah. gone through it or put themselves through it. Yeah. I'm going to go I mean, with like, that one. I'm going to go with that one yeah. more, put themselves through some shit, put themselves yeah. through some shit. So yeah, for sure. Cause we, cause yeah. we, cause we like punishment, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we we found better ways to uh, channel our energy now. Perfect. Well, dude, I appreciate it, my brother. This is amazing. Thank you so much yeah, for coming dude. on. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. You got it, my man. Guys, if you like this podcast, make sure you send it to your friends. Thank y'all so much for listening, guys. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.